Assalamu alaikum. On today's show, we will be discussing the ins and outs of creating meaningful and lasting relationships in multi-faith households, as well as parenting dynamics. Joining me on today's show is Sophia Huck, an effortless parenting coach and an ambassador for children's mental health with the My Mental Health Rocks organization. She currently lives in Reading, UK with her husband and three children, a pet squirrel in the garden, and lovely neighbors all around. She is on a mission to take one parent or guardian per household through the inside-out transformation. She aims to make parenting effortless and stress-free through life-changing insights and realizations. Sophia, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Of course, our pleasure. Um, so before we got into the parenting dynamic, um, I wanted to go over your background a little bit for our listeners because a lot of them are reverts or thinking of reverting. And I understand that your mother is a German who converted to Islam. How did she learn about and eventually embrace Islam? Yeah, so my mom from... She tells us like that from teenage onwards, she had this inner longing to find more, to find more truth. Something was still missing and she was a practicing um, Christian. Um, And she was fortunate enough or um, that she had a friend who um, said, oh, okay, let's go and, and travel to the UK, to Birmingham, and uh, meet this amazing man I've met, and I want you to meet him. So she traveled with her friend to Birmingham, the UK, and met, um, back then she did, obviously, she didn't know that, but he um, was the uncle of my dad, and he was based here in the UK to to basically invite people to Islam. He came, he was there from Pakistan, and his family was there too. So my mom met with him, and uh, he didn't. Um, he actually at the beginning he didn't necessarily um, invite her to Islam, but he asked her to travel with with him as in to help him with some translation work um, because her English was very good and he his English was not so so he so she traveled with him and her friend as well and they traveled around and helped him with his work in translation and she was very impressed by his character and his manner and everything so she started looking into um yeah, his religion, which was Islam, and um, uh, she, after traveling around with him, she came back to Germany, but then she actually went back there with the intention to become a Muslim, um, and she stayed there for, for three months studying Islam with him um, in Birmingham, and uh, yeah, that was that was her story to conversion, and actually, I just remembered something before that as well. My mom, as a young um, university student, she travelled to India, Nepal, and Pakistan, and uh, she was very impressed by the hospitality she was met with in Pakistan, which was actually her first sort of um, introduction to the the religion or people of that religion as well. Um, so, yes. Yeah, the yeah she was very much impressed by the character and hospitality of people she met at that time and uh, that was like yeah her main attraction to the religion and then the further she studied it she found it to be yeah true to through what she was looking for and uh, yeah she she embraced islam in birmingham and then um my uncle suggested to her that she um, she should marry his nephew, which my dad, who was living in Pakistan at that time, and she agreed. So yeah, they got married and uh, in Pakistan, and then they moved back to Germany, 
and uh, yeah, that's how I was born in Germany and, and lived there for, um, yeah, till I was 12 and then also lived in Baisan, but now my parents are back in Germany too. So, yeah. Um, Mashallah. Yeah, so, and and yeah. so uh, her family was still Christian at the time that she converted. And do you know anything about how they reacted when they found out she became yes. a Muslim? Yes. So um, non, no, nobody else in my mom's family converted. So yes, my grandmother my and my grandfather, they were separated. So my grandmother's reaction... She was very open to it, and she actually came to the wedding as well in Pakistan. Um, and her she, her reaction was very, very. My grandmother was an amazing lady. Um, she was very open. She accepted us as we were, and and she loved us dearly, and she loved my dad dearly too. Um, so her reaction was very much of embracing and. Uh, and she always said, like, oh, she she was also practicing Christian, and she attended the church on Sundays, and she was part of different activities. Um, it, yeah, um, she was very open, and we had an amazing, like, my grandmother, she's, like, one of my heroes, an amazing relationship with her, and... Um, but on the other side, my grandfather, so my mom's dad, he did not react so well to it. He, he didn't talk to my mom for a very long time. Um, he was very upset and angry at the at the whole, uh, yeah, at the conversion to Islam. And um, and I remember as a as a young child going and visiting him and and uh, not being a very a uh, harmonious environment, let's say, although I still have personally fond memories of my, of my grandfather. He passed away quite a long time ago, so only knew him as a very young child. Um, so his reaction was not not so good. And, but, um, and my mom also has one brother, and he also reacted in a way that he didn't talk to her for nine years. But then he came around. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he also passed away quite like about seven years ago, but he became very close to us as well. Um, and yeah, so him and my grandmother, we, we were all very, very close to each other, regardless of the differences in religion. And my, yeah, it's interesting, my uncle, he also searched for the truth all his life. It, he passed away as, as not a Muslim, but he did believe, um, and he, he was a, a seeker too. So yeah, the um, different reactions, different, so right now, from my mom's side, uh, she's only got one cousin sister left who live, lives quite far away, and uh, my uncle has one daughter, and uh, she also has a family, she has a son and a husband, and we're very close to her too. Um, so, yeah, alhamdulillah, the, the religions haven't uh, pulled us apart or anything like that. But, um, yeah, there's different reactions from different people in the family, definitely. MashaAllah. And so I, it sounds like with time, it, it healed all those wounds and you were able to come together as a family. Um, which I know will be very comforting to a lot of our listeners. Um, yeah. So what was your experience like as the daughter of a convert then? Do you feel like it, w- it was a bit different than someone who was born into the religion and the whole family was Muslim? Or Yeah, I, I, I always felt very honored to be the daughter of a, of a convert. Um, and I feel it opened my eyes to so much more having people in the family of different religions that I taught my, like my grandmother, what she taught me was tolerance, uh, a lot of, yeah, love and tolerance and, and openness. My, my uncle, he was quite 
like somebody who would be, I call it, always swimming against the stream. If, if people did this, he would do the opposite. And I always, I was <laughs> taken a bit after him like that. And and I loved that, that we were very open. We could talk about different issues and, and it, it was still okay. We would laugh about it. And, and it, yeah, the main... Um, uh, yeah, that I think that experience definitely. Uh, I think it's it's a. Uh, I feel very um, honored and very blessed to have had the experience of not work, not growing up in one culture. And the other thing that was also part of it, growing up in Germany, was that almost ev- all my mum's uh, friends were also converts. And uh, we were exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different types of people, and and I loved that. It was it it never occurred to me, having grown up like that, that um, anybody should be treated in any different way because of their background. So I feel, yeah, that's a huge blessing. Um, to grow up in that environment like that. Yeah. For sure. And I'm sure it has brought a, a lot of strength to your practice as a parenting coach. Um, yes. So one of the greatest blessings that we do have in our lives are our children. How yeah. has Islam shaped the way in which you parent? Um, I think the biggest thing for me um and these have come through many years of realization. It's like that ultimately the respond the uh, our children don't belong to us. And although we've been given with this huge responsibility and 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 I take it very serious that responsibility. I remember when my first son was born and the amount of responsibility I felt, I was very, very overwhelming. And I've always taken that responsibility very serious because I feel Allah has given us, first of all, the blessing to have children. So many people want children and then they, they might not be able to have them. And then having healthy children, Alhamdulillah, three healthy children, such a big blessing. And then like, to that res- like I feel like that, Islam has really taught me that it's it's a it's a big responsibility, but ultimately they belong to Allah and and they're Allah's slaves, and so we are not that we cannot control everything that happens. So that it's like a comfort, like their guidance is not in our hand; it's in Allah's hand. They're they're um, yeah, ultimately the there's only so much we can do and and the other thing that um, Islam is definitely um, in, uh, like the, a big impact on my parenting is um, the concept of mercy so Allah has so much mercy on us and I, w- I really want to um, parent from a place of mercy and understanding and forgiveness so that's like a tr- uh, yeah the key principles I want to parent parent on um, that these um, innocent human beings who have been given at, in our care need to be treated with utmost mercy and respect and forgiveness um, yeah yeah Absolutely, mashallah. I completely agree. Um, so along your parenting journey, you mentioned that an event called the Paradigm Shift rocked your world and totally transformed your life. We would like to know how so. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good question and a, and a big one. Um, so the Paradigm shift was literally going through the shift of of a psychological transformation as to how we think um, our mind works as to how it actually works. So 
before the paradigm shift, I was in the mindset that, okay, event happens um, and I feel something like, um, let's, if we stick to parenting, let's say my child does, has an undesirable behavior and I get annoyed uh, because of that undesirable behavior and then I react to it and I have to correct it and I need to do something about it. Otherwise, there are the, the, all these thinking and feeling floating around. Um, happens but after going through a par the paradigm shift I realized that okay whether my child behaves well or doesn't behave well whether whatever is going on in the outside world my own my I am always gonna feel my own thinking in the moment and the outside event are not the cause of my feelings, of my thinking. So I'm, whatever I'm experiencing life in life, I am experienced through this power called thought. And not only that, but it's thought in the moment. So how it rocks your world in a way is like that nothing on the outside world has power or control over you anymore because you are... Whatever you experience, whatever feelings that are the that say let's say happening to you is it's an insider job. It's like coming from the inside out. It's not coming from the outside in, and it changes things in a big way because you you don't. It's a lot of things drop your drop off your mind. A lot of concerns. A lot of worries. And also, you always have an option on how to react because now you know that, okay, the, the, a child's behavior is not causing your feelings. It's your own thinking in that moment that is causing your feelings. And that just allows you to, to, to really upgrade your life in, a, in an amazing way. Um, because that what I mentioned before, the mercy, the forgiveness, the uh, that style of parenting becomes so much more easier and effortless, um, psychologically effortless. What I mean here, not physically effortless, but psychologically effortless, because you're living with the reality that nothing on the outside world is is causing your feelings, and in that way, you let go of of a lot of hang-ups and a lot of the hard work that we put in to, to get rid of those feelings. Um, ah, so, it, so you're in control of your inside world, in other words, is what you're, you're saying. Yes, uh, yes, in, in, uh, in a way, yes, that we, we are not 100% of, in control of all the feelings and thoughts that come to us. We, we control a certain amount, but the less we um, we have to worry about the fact, uh, about the illusion that the outside world is causing our feelings, the less is on our mind and the quieter our mind gets and the quieter our mind gets, the better our life gets in, in yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and so having four of my own, I know that they can push you to those emotional yeah. edges pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, can you think of a particular incident or event that kind of inspired you to seek parenting advice? Um, yes, um, my son was going through some um, bullying at school and I couldn't see the way forward at all um, and yeah I mean uh, having gone through my so at that time I was uh, I had uh, had my my coach so I, I always ask him or I ask other parents who who might have been through it through it and dealt with it so definitely there's always really incidences where I wouldn't know what to do what to do myself um, and yeah, it's it's uh, not easy when you're in it to see the best way out either. So there's always gonna be incidences where I, I'll definitely be asking others for advice and the way best way forward. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that answered and, uh, your question or not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. So bullying, I'm sure, is a, a very good example of a way in which the outside world kind of crashes our party and can mess with our inside world. Yeah. Um, so you're currently an inside out coach. Um, yeah. Can you explain to the listeners what that means? So inside out coach means like everything I um, teach or everything I coach people on or how I solve their their hangups or their problems or how I help them to move forward is based on this inside out understanding, which is a simple sentence of uh, we are always feeling our thinking in the moment. Um, but the more deeper we go into this sentence and the more we look at the implications in our life of it, the, the, the more upgrades we get and the more effortless our parent, parenting gets and the more deeper our relationship gets and the more um, easier it gets to see how how why people have different opinions or, or the easier it gets to to look past your child's challenging behavior or all these things so everything I co- um, I teach or everything I coach people on is is based on the principles of the inside out understanding so that's um, yeah I would put it okay so that's the framework for which you you will coach parents yeah. or others seeking help in their relationships yes um, so it sounds like it's pretty universal that we could yeah. probably apply this to adult relationships too. Um, yeah. So you're not limiting it to just Muslim parents. Any parent could benefit from it or even maybe a child who is a convert and their parents are having a difficult time uh, accepting that they have reverted. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, even right now I'm... Um, also working with some uh, young people and some teenagers and uh, they're um, yeah enjoying it as far as they tell me so yeah no definitely it's a universal yeah and it, it can be definitely for relationships it's it's um, uh, very beneficial very beneficial uh, great so what are some of the most effective strategies that you've found in dealing with families where the faiths are mixed like that, or it it doesn't even have to be about faith. Maybe there is something fundamentally different between the parent and the child, and they're having a struggle overcoming that. What are some of the the tips that you would give? Yeah, the, the number one realization or um, implication, let's say, that really comes from the inside out paradigm is that when we see that we all live in our own thought created reality, and I call it, we call it separate realities. And one way I explained it in, in, in uh, one of my courses, I thought, was like, imagine um, we all live on different planets, let's say, your mom lives on Venus, you live on Mars, your child lives on um, Pluto or any of the other planets. And if you look at planets, they're all beautiful, they're all unique, they all have their own properties, their own character, their own view. They, they, they see the world from wherever they are in, in the universe. And if you look at family dynamics, that every person in the family is living on a different planet. And the only way really to have any interaction is through communication. But the communication has to be in such a way that it's very clear and and in a way that the other person on the other planet can actually hear you and also understand you. So for me, it's like... (laughs) Um, 
it's it's not like about having any sort of techniques or but it's about realizing that the other person lives in their own reality they have had their own experiences in life and and truly truly sometimes they cannot see where you are coming from or why you're doing something or why you're bringing about all this change which they don't really want to deal with and and also yeah um they sometimes feel maybe that or they've been betrayed or they haven't done a good enough job as a parent that's why um, their child has now had to go to another religion so there's a lot of things going on in in a, in in different people's minds and unless we really find out that what is it that's really so um distressing for you about me being in a different religion now or about me going down a different path we wouldn't know and um and sometimes the person themselves doesn't know because they are stuck with certain limiting beliefs or um things like that so i think it's for a child i would recommend definitely to to look at their parents with a lot of mercy and and just realize that okay from they just cannot see it right now but maybe next year it might change or the year after like I mean my uncle he didn't change his mind for nine years but once he did he was glad he did and so it's yeah so it's um, accepting the fact I guess as well that the other person might never change their mind or they might change their mind but when they do welcome them with open arms and or let them know that whenever they do change their mind uh the relationship can be there definitely so so yeah it's about that realizing that we all live in our separate really quite separate realities and planets and sometimes we just don't see the other person's reality at all and that's where that clash or the the uh, miscommunication and things like that start causing problems between people. Yes, and um, from a Quranic perspective, yeah. we're told that, you know, Allah has called and guided some and has, has not done the same for others. So it's kind of accepting that um, the minimum amount of control on the world, it sounds like, um, with the inside-out parenting that we do have. Yeah. Yeah. MashaAllah. Yeah. So... Um, Many, the one of the top reasons why reverts don't revert right away, they might be convicted in their heart or something, but yeah. they are afraid to lose those relationships with, let's say, their mom or their dad, or they know that this will greatly upset them. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your advice in starting that conversation with their parent? Wow, that's um, that's a really good question. <laughs> right. um, one thing that came to mind is that um, really reassuring them that whatever your decision is in terms of whichever way you're going, becoming a Muslim or whatever, yeah, um, direction you want to take your life reassuring them that that it's not a reflection on them that that um because I feel often um like my grandmother she said that to me once she said like oh I don't know what I did wrong that my children turned out to be like this and it's made me really think like um she didn't do anything wrong. I mean, she brought up her kids in the best way possible. And my mom becoming a Muslim or not becoming a Muslim is not a reflection on her parenting. So from a parenting sort of perspective, I feel like often parents, they feel it's some sort of that they fail their children or they, uh, if they're very strong in their own belief, they, they feel, oh, I haven't... Uh, 
grounded them enough in my own religion that they have gone and accepted another religion and and all these doubts that creep up so I would like uh, reassure them that it's not a reflection on whether they've done a good job or not and reassure them they brought them up in in whatever best way they um they uh, thought was possible for them in in that time and and that this is purely a a personal journey and another reflection on the whole family or reflection of any sort of failure on parenting or or even a, a rebellion against them so uh, yeah that's what comes to mind having had my own experience of my grandmother th- having these doubts um, and even then I remember back then I I I didn't really know what to say, but this is what I said to her. I said that it, it, it is nothing to do with you as a parent or as a mother that um, your children have taken on a, a different path. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yes. I think that's one of uh, the hardest realizations to come to is that eventually, despite all of your best efforts, um, it might turn out in a way that you hadn't anticipated or or wanted. So um, I think it's good to have that mindset of, you know, you can only control so much and and then the rest is on the other person. Yeah, yeah. Um, So do you have any parting advice for our listeners who may be thinking of becoming parents or have newly become parents? Yeah. Yeah, that's a a beautiful question. So new parents or becoming parents, it's like, um, yeah, um, having talked to a lot of parents and really thinking about this is I um, really enjoyed the journey and, and not having that like, um, perspective that oh okay when my kids are a bit older it'll get easier or when they are a bit like this it might be better but but living in the in the now with them and really enjoying each age as it as it comes along um, especially at the beginning it's a lot of physically difficult for parents but then later on we feel it becomes difficult in other ways so it's like we don't want to be stuck in that sort of constant wishing that things might be different. Uh, I feel a lot of like of us might get sometimes get stuck in that. Oh, if my kids were only a little bit like this, things would be easier. Or if they would be like that, it would be easier. So it's about, I guess, again, accepting the the current moment as it is and then doing the best with it. Um, and yeah, and one another really big insight I've had that the main difference between adults and children is life experience really like as adults we've had a lot more life experience and as children they have less life experience that's why often they might make take steps or have behaviors or make decisions that doesn't don't make sense to us but if we put it across to them that, okay, you know, I've had this life experience and if you want to benefit from it, then, then you know, let me know and, and I will tell you how not to maybe repeat what I did. But, but again, it's not all in our control. Often children have to go through similar experiences we've been through, although we've been trying hard to... to um, not let them go through those experiences. So, yeah, it's, it's about being in the here and now and, and letting go of a lot of hang-ups we might have. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. Inshallah, <laughs> very good advice. Um so, Sophia, thank you for being on the show. We really have benefited from all of your gems of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you.
And my dear listeners, if you are intrigued by what Sophia has had to say, you can get more of her advice on coachsophia.com slash gift. Uh, you can also find her on Facebook and YouTube. Her name is Sophia Huck. And inshallah, we will put all of the links in the show notes that, so that you may find her easily and transform the way in which you parent. And not only parent, as we have learned, but as you and the way in which you communicate with those in your life who may be coming from different viewpoints than yours. As always, we are blessed that you have been listening and we have been blessed to talk to Miss Sophia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.